Okay, so before we go any further, if you didn't see it already, this is a spoiler review for Godzilla King of the Monsters, so if you haven't seen it yet, what are you doing? I've given you multiple warnings as it is. So if you don't want to be spoiled, get out, and then come back when you've seen the movie, or maybe you don't care about spoilers. Anyway, so let's talk about, uh, talk about uh, some spoilerish Godzilla stuff. Now, um, where do I begin? So what I find it, so what I find interesting the most is this does acknowledge a shared universe, and you do see Kong. Granted, it's kind of reused footage, but yeah, they acknowledge that yeah, Kong is co coming back, and him and Godzilla are about to square off. Um, the human villain. Um, who's played by Charles Dance, uh, he is, like I said in the, my non-spoiler review, he's probably one of the best human villains we've had in a Godzilla film in a while, which is a good thing because we've usually, usually kind of devolved him into just alien villains, so I'm glad they... I was actually kind of expecting them to do an alien route with him, but nope, they did not. Um, and what they do with him at the end credits, which I'll go into late a little bit later, is... Uh, makes me really interested to see where they're going to go in the, in the next film. But as for uh, the, the, the Titans, or Kaiju, or whatever you want to call them, they are fantastic. They are just totally fantastic. Godzilla, when he um, when he gets into a fight, and I will admit that the fights are very in-your-face and very just blow-for-blow. Blow. It's just astonishing of how much... Um, it feels very raw. It feels like when these monsters when these monsters fight, it's a very raw clash between all the monsters. Um, it's very much a just straight up slam. You're in it, and you feel it. You feel like every hit, especially that first fight between Godzilla and Ghidorah in the Antarctic. Wow, that was probably a really good one. Um, I will say that, um, like I talked about in my previous review, but I'll actually get into Ghidorah for a moment, they did some interesting shit with Ghidorah that I was not expecting, such as Ghidorah having the ability to regrow heads. Like, I was not expecting that. I was like, oh, we're really going with the Hydra thing, aren't we? And don't worry, he doesn't get more than three heads. He just regrows them. Like, when I saw uh, when Godzilla bit off one of his heads, I was like, oh, well, I guess the trailers were kind of lying to us. Maybe he continues the rest of the movie with with two heads. What is he doing? Oh, he has three heads. Oh, my God. Um, he, can regrow, he can regrow his heads. What the hell? <laughs> um, so that took me aback, really. That really took me aback. Um, also, the elect we saw it in a TV spot of him just dispersing electricity from his wings was a neat trick. I like how also they acknowledge that Ghidorah is a clearly malevolent being, like he clearly knows what he's doing, and when he takes over um, Godzilla's throne for a while, it's, yeah, he knows what he's doing, and he's killing everything. Um, Rodan... Uh, uh, basically becomes a lackey for Ghidorah, and that took me. That was another thing that took me aback was that Rodan actually becomes a lackey for, like, an underling for Ghidorah. In fact, when Godzilla and Mothra come to fight uh, Ghidorah at the end, Rodan actually jumps in and helps him. It's actually kind of funny because, and now when you hear this, you're never going to get this out of your head. Um, Rodan in here is pretty much like Chamberlain Skeks, the Chamberlain Skeksis from Dark Crystal, like. Every time I saw him when he started working for Ghidorah, all I could think was, mm, mm, mm. Now you can't get that out of your fucking head now. <laughs> um, so yeah, it also is kind of funny, like, because I thought God, Rodan, I kind of figured Rodan would be like a rogue element in this movie, but I was not expecting him to be like a servant to Ghidorah when he took over the top dog position. Um... When Rodan actually fought against Mothra, that was a cool fight, and he actually is, he looks like he's gonna live to see the next film. Yeah, I actually thought Mothra straight up murdered his ass, like she straight up shanked him in that fight with her, um, and I thought he died, but no, he shows up and he's like, he bows to Godzilla, like, hey man, hey man, I'm we're cool now. You're 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 you the boss now. You the boss. I'm 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 here. So. Yeah, God, Rodan kind of bitches out at the end, which, as much as a Rodan fan, I'm like, well, that's 
okay, that's an that's a in, that's a odd take, but I'll take it. It's not the same Ghidorah we know, but I mean Rodan, excuse me. But I did like Rodan of just making him this just equal force of nature to Godzilla. And now it's going. I'm wondering if he's going to have if he's still going to be on Godzilla's side when he takes on Kong next year. The other Titans we saw in here, like Methuselah, Behemoth, Sakilla, uh, weak names, I know, but hey, um, we can't get, you know, we can't all think of really kick ass Japanese names for all these monsters. We're not all Jeremy Robertson, the guy who created Nemesis. So, <laughs> I'm fine with it. I do like the kaiju designs, and thank god the kaiju actually have some fucking, um, the original kaiju actually have some fucking identity to them. That was my problem with the Mutos, and yes, we do see another Muto in here, but it's even then it has its own identity. Um, the Muto, uh, yeah, the Mutos were very generic and very cloverfield esque and that was my problem with them. In here, um, the creative team behind these kaiju clearly, clearly had an idea of what they wanted to do. I mean, the names are generic, but at least these kaiju in this movie, the original kaiju in here, like, you can see, like, oh yeah, if this gets to be a franchise, you guys are definitely gonna get your own movies. <laughs> um, so that was neat. Um, Mothra, like I said in my non-spoiler review, Mothra doesn't get to do a lot, and when she does, it's kind of a plot device, but again, as a Godzilla fan, we kind of figured Mothra at this point has been more or less a plot device. And her death in here was kind of expected. Um, and when I saw it coming, I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> um, the other thing that was not unexpected, was also unexpected, was her giving her last amount of energy to Godzilla to give him the power to fight. Um, which was, uh, which was a neat take. I really did like how they played that. I was actually very reminiscent of Tokyo SOS, which is a favorite Godzilla mon a film of mine. Uh, speaking of deaths, let's talk about some deaths. Sarah Zawa dying was heartbreaking. It's a beautiful scene and how they build it up. And I will also say that when we saw what clearly is supposed to be Atlantis in this movie, um, I think they were trying to reference uh, Gamera. I would not be shocked if they got the rights to Gamera next. I would not be shocked in the slightest if what we see next is like, hey, we're doing Gamera, um, because the, these Atlanteans clearly worship them as gods, and Atlantis has some has some uh, interesting has some uh, ties to Gamera, so if Toho takes the rights back, like every, you know, if they take the, when they take the rights back, you're gonna have Kong, but you're gonna need somebody else to back him up on that, on star power, who better than Godzilla's box office rival in Japan? It's not like um, his studio ain't doing shit with him right now. Just saying. Anywho, so yeah, Sarazawa's death was heartbreaking. And again, I don't know where these, what movie these critics saw, but the human drama in here was very at the forefront. But not like it didn't take away from any of the kaiju action in here, which was very, like I said, raw, in your face, heart pounding, and just excellent. Um, this, the human characters in here, they don't feel, you know, robotic, they don't feel boring, and they don't make stupid decisions. Um, and, you know, there are some coincidences here and there, but hey, it's movie. you know, it's movies, you just gotta roll with the punches. If we could, you know, if we had that kind of train of logic to uh, yell at every stupid decision or coincidence in a movie, we'd hate the, the MCU now, wouldn't we? Yeah. But, the... The big thing with this movie was when that scene happened with Sarazawa, it's a heartbreaking scene between him and Godzilla, and it's very reminiscent. It's like a re neat little reverse to... Um, it's a neat little reverse to how his death went about in the 54 film, where he was dying to try to kill Godzilla, and here he was dying to save Godzilla. And they do reference the Oxygen Destroyer, which made me go... Wow. I mean, I knew they teased it, but I thought it was just Michael Daughtry fucking with people. I, honest to God, thought it was just him fucking with people. But when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, we could actually get Destroya in the next movie. But, yeah, that's not gonna, what I, I don't think we're gonna get Ghidorah, I don't think we're gonna get Destroya, but who we are gonna get is Mecha Ghidorah. That's right. At the end of this movie, the post credit scene, we do get a snippet of, hey, Kong vs. Godzilla is coming in mid-credits, but end credits, we see Charles Dance's character find a, the severed head of, of Ghidorah, 
that Godzilla bit off in his fight, his second fight with him, and he's like, I'll take it. And I'm like, oh, oh, Mecha Ghidorah. Yeah, so, oh boy, looks like we now know who Godzilla and Kong are going to team up to fight against in this movie. Looks like we, know, we now know that villain. But that took me aback. I thought, because it didn't mentally register to me until I was watching the end credits, and he was like, oh yeah, the Charles Dance's character got away. I'm like, oh my god, they're, he's do, they're doing uh, legendary G Mecha Ghidorah. Bring it on! <laughs> Bring. I wonder if they had to get the rights to that. I really have to wonder, because Ghidorah, Mecha Ghidorah and Ghidorah are licensed separately at Toho. I wonder if that was a package deal, or did they have to get the rights separately? Don't know. But yeah. Um, so that took me aback. Uh, but again, the human drama in here is just fantastic. When you feel these characters die, you you feel for them. You really do. You really do feel for these characters when they, you know, when they are killed. Some of them, you know, less gracious than others, but still, you feel pretty bad for them. And every character moment in here is very well acted. A lot of these actors are not very, you know, like, big name actors aside from Watanabe and a few others here and there, but what I like about this is that they had actors who were good in their craft. Everyone here gave 100%. Like, and I also dug, side note, I forgot to talk about this earlier, I like how they did the twin fairies. I like the subtle nod to the twin fairies of making it, it was twin women, it was two women who had been working at Monarch, and yeah, that made me go, yay! That was a neat little reference. That was that was that was like, oh, that's a cool reference to Mothra. Anywho, but like I was go going back to what I said about the actors was that the main thing you have to look at is that these are all like some of them are big name like O'Shea Jackson Jr. who's definitely getting his name out there, and again Watanabe of course. But there are some other actors in here who are very much character actors, and I think that works better in Godzilla's favor. I didn't come here to see Joe Schmo act his ass off in the movie. I came to see Godzilla, who was the, let's face it, he's the real, him, Rodan, Ghidorah, and Mothra are the real stars of this movie. Not any of them, well they were really good, and I'm not trying to shit on them, but th this is what thing, one thing the critics really got wrong was, this is not a human movie. This is a Godzilla movie, so Godzilla gets top billing. I don't know how else to fucking explain it to you fucking morons. Not any of you are morons, I mean the people on Rotten Tomatoes. Anywho, I just love this movie. I could go on and on about this movie and where it could go. I'm really excited to see what they could do with Kong versus Godzilla now, especially if where they leave of, of almost hinting that Godzilla might be the villain in the next movie. That's... I'm really excited to see where they could go with that. Because where they end it is like, oh, maybe Godzilla got too much power. <laughs> maybe he's been given too much power as the, as the Alpha again. That, um... It's a scary thought. So, yeah, Godzilla vs. Kong. Cannot wait for that. I cannot wait to see that. Um, it's good... I just love this movie. This was made for Godzilla fans by Godzilla fans, so go see this movie. If you love Godzilla or if you just love mindless monster action, go see it. It's it's, it's probably the best uh, American Godzilla film we've had of the three. Uh, this is the best. Third time's the charm. And I don't mean to shed a shit on Edward's movie, but the more I see it, the more flaws I see in it. It's not a terrible movie. That goes to 98. But still, this was fantastic. Anyway, so you guys tell us in the comments below, what did you guys think of Godzilla King of the Monsters? And this time, unlike in my non-spoiler review on my channel, you guys can spoil away on this. So you guys comment below, let us know, and if you're new here, remember to like, share, and subscribe to this video and be a part of Earth's My Subscribers. I'm DPZ, and we will see you right here once more in the universe.